What is up y'all, Odeed here once again, and today I'm gonna to give you some very basic but secret tips on how to pick out and trim your spare ribs for the smoker. Let's go ahead and get that video started. All right, first thing to note when picking out spare ribs or St. Louis style ribs, uh, or even baby back ribs, when you're at the store is make sure you get a decent brand. So find a store that carries a good brand. I like Swift and just get quality spare ribs. Basically, if you're getting quality pork, uh, that's gonna help a lot with the finished product. If you're buying kind of like cheap, low class pork, um, you're gonna have a tougher time getting a good finished product. The next thing to note is when I pick them out, I try to get ribs that are all the same size. If you notice, these are pretty much the same length and they're pretty much the same width. That way they cook evenly. Also to note, and this is one of my secret tips that I kind of figured out on my own, try to find ribs that are thick. You see these here, they got a nice thickness to it. So yeah, thicker ribs seem to come out juicier, I've noticed, uh, after you've cooked them. Whenever I get thin racks of ribs and I cook them, um, they dry out, they kind of burn, and uh, the texture gets weird. So again, nice thick racks. Um, and when I go to the store, if there's 15 racks of ribs sitting in the cooler uh, in the meat section, I will check each and every rack and uh, pick out the ones that I like the best. Now another thing I do is I look for striations of fat here. You see all these striations in here? This is gonna render off and it's gonna give you a nice finished product, number one. And number two, as this fat renders off here, it's gonna base the meat for you and then you don't have to open your lid and spritz your ribs. I did a video a while back where I uh, spritzed some ribs or sprayed some ribs and then didn't spray another rack right next to it. I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out. And um, basically from that experiment, I just decided that I don't think spritzing is worth it. Um, and if you get, you know, racks with nice fat in it, you won't really need it. I will also say though, make sure you don't get ribs with too much fat. This one in here maybe has a little bit more than I'd like. Um, and this one I'd say is about perfect here. This one, I'm probably gonna cut some of this out. Um, but out of all the racks that were sitting there in the grocery store, these were the ones that I liked the best. Okay, I got the ribs out of the packaging and you know what, before I go any further, speaking of the packaging, um, if you wanna get really nice ribs, you're gonna get uh, better quality if you buy them individually. Basically, if you go to like a uh, bulk store um, and buy ribs like in packs of threes or anything like that, what they normally do is the two outside ribs are really nice racks and then they stick some rinky dink uh, rack in the middle that you can't see, like a smaller rack. So you're gonna get two really nice big racks and then some like small rack in the middle and then uh, when you cook all these, they're gonna cook unevenly. So if you're looking for the nicest ribs, um, buy them individually so you can see each rack um, in each package. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and wipe these down with a paper towel just to get, um, I think this is called myoglobin. I'm gonna get all this off if we can. Let me see some of it back here. And even if you've individually picked out your racks like I did, um, sometimes you get some surprises that you can't see through the package, like this flap of meat here, but don't worry, I'll cut that off. I can cut this off here as well. All right, these are all cleaned up. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna trim them up just a little bit. I know these are St. Louis spares and they're pretty much how I want them, but you can see some things here that uh, we need to cut off just to kind of even them out, square them up as I like to say, so that way um, they cook really nice and you get a nice presentation. First thing we're gonna do is get rid of this flap uh, if they have it. Some of these look like they may not have it. By the way, I use a large kitchen knife when I do ribs. Um, I like to call this my Michael Myers knife, basically because I might be cutting through bone and I want something that uh, has like some weight to it. This flat meat, um, I mean, I guess you could grind it up and put it in sausage or make burgers out of it or something if you want. And then everything else, um, you can see any kind of flap, like this flap here, cut that off. We have some bone shard here that looks like it got kind of nicked when uh, being cut, you definitely wanna get rid of that. All right, next thing we're gonna do is I like to count 11 ribs over from the thick end and then trim this like these end parts off because um, this is just gonna like burn and they're gonna be little itty bitty like small ribs that you don't really wanna serve to people. So you just count. Actually on this one I'm gonna take, I'm gonna go to the 12th rib. Here's your like smallest little itty bitty one. 
Again, you can keep this for sausages or something like that. This I'm not too happy about. Thanks, Swift. <laughs> After I just gave you guys a nice compliment, you gave me a rack with a, a bone cut out, but you know what, it happens. Yeah, I'm actually gonna go to the 12th, uh, 12th bone on these racks here, and then just cut this little end one. This would actually, if you can cut this bone out, this would actually make probably really nice uh, sausage meat. As you can see, they're actually starting to look like nice racks of ribs. Okay, so yeah, we're just gonna cut this last one off here. And we're gonna do a little bit of trimming. This is where this heavy knife is gonna come into play. We kinda of wanna cut this piece off right here. You're gonna go through some bone. So again, you kinda of have like some nice weight here with a nice kitchen knife like this. So this rack here, as far as like its shape, um, I'd say that's gonna work for me. This has a little bit more fat on here than I'd want, but um, out of all the racks that I saw, this was probably, you know, these three were the best. Then here we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna come in here and cut this off. So I see like a little fold here you can usually get through. All right, that one is good as far as its shape. So those two are good to go. As you can see, they're fairly close to the same size, which is good. This one here, same thing. Come in here and just cut this off. This also will like, it'll just dry out and burn. It's like a lot of like silver skin and fat. So yeah, you don't need that. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the membrane off. And funny enough, it almost looks like on this rack here, the membrane is already gone. And on these two here, they're not, which is very odd. But anyways, uh, let's take these two off. You can start, take your knife, pull it up like this. Do the same on this rack. Grab yourself a paper towel. This one's being stubborn because uh, this bone has been cut into. So yeah, funny enough, some things you just don't see even when you uh, kind of take a look, you know, and do some good uh, examining of the product before you buy it. I did not see that those bones were like that. So yeah, membranes are off on those. Let's flip them around and uh, do some trimming on the front. All right, so what are we gonna do on the front here? As you can see, there's a little bit of a flap. I'm gonna get rid of that. You just kinda of wanna like square these up as good as you can. Uh, this fat over here on this end, I always take this off personally. At least most of it anyways. Not all of it, but. So that's off. This rack here, a little bit more fat on here than I'd like. But it's not horrible. Then this flap here we're gonna get rid of. Dig into some of this, but not too much. All right, so here we go. I would say out of all three of these racks, this one I probably like the best. It's got the nice striations in there. There wasn't a whole lot of fat. This one, um, I probably could have picked a better rack than this. This right here is too much fat, uh, but I liked the size of it, the thickness of it. Um, and the other racks were a lot smaller and thinner, um, so I went for thickness on this one. This one I'd say is fairly decent. There's maybe a little bit more fat in here than I'd like, but it's not too bad. All right, so that's what they look like when they're all trimmed up, and uh, let's go ahead and put some rub on them. All right, let's get some rub on these, and I'm gonna use my Big Jake's Dang old Rub. By the way, if you are interested in getting some of this, you can shoot me a PM on Instagram. The name is DJ Odeed. One thing to note too, whenever you get a spice jar to put uh, like rub on your, uh, on your meat, make sure it's got nice large holes in it. It really helps. And let's go ahead and get these done. This is actually the easiest and funnest part. Also, I know some people use binders uh, on their ribs, you know, like mustard or something like that. But uh, number one, it's not really gonna like give you any flavor. And number two, I don't think it really helps all that much. That's just my personal opinion. If you wanna use a binder, you're more than welcome. Pat it in. We'll flip these over. Do the backside as well. I'd say it's not quite as important, but I like to do it anyways. Add it in, let's flip these over, see if we missed any spots on the other side. 
All right, these three racks are ready for the smoker. The next thing we're gonna do uh, is I like to put them in a food saver bag and I like to let them sit in the fridge overnight. That way the uh, rub can really permeate the meat. Although if you don't wanna do that and you're in a hurry, just let these sit out for 20 minutes and uh, once you start to see some of the moisture kind of pull up to the top, they should be ready to go. But if you wanna get a nice permeation of that rub, put them in a food saver bag, stick them in the fridge overnight and uh, they will be really, really nice as far as the flavor goes and uh, that spice rub will get all the way into the meat. All right, y'all, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, put them down below and uh, please subscribe, I would appreciate it. My name is Odeed, AKA Big Jake, and I'm out.